Down the rabbit hole. Oh my gosh. I really check check out down the rabbit hole. I mean, just the research, you know, how fast, you know, they are. You know, a lot of times down the rabbit hole, sometimes it's running circles around me. Investigative YouTuber. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Let me check these comments. Yes, let's get it in. How is everyone doing? Oh, guys, we started the morning quite interestingly over here. Uh, you know, we're just little, little rabbits, right? That's all we do. Uh, sometimes we behave, sometimes we don't. Sometimes when you do research, you find stuff that some people don't want you to know. And so then what they do is copy, strike, write whatever in your channel. So we woke up to some BS this morning after our little 30 minute commentary. But see, here's the deal, guys. I'm not going to be silent. I don't like to be silenced. Okay? Don't silence the rabbit because you'll feel the wrath. And in addition to that, I'll even break it down slowly for the person that file that strike because guess what you just confirmed information that we were hoping to obtain so last night last night last night okay we did a little video all right did a little video about uh kingsley russell and the allegations of the pill on uh kathy iandoli's book that will be released on the 17th we found the audio since deleted clip Okay, we found it, we found it, and we played it, and uh, this morning we woke up and we got a little strike on our channel from someone named Kingsley Russell. Okay? Kingsley Russell did a, a strike on our channel. So, you know what? That's fine. You could totally do that. Uh, totally free will, and just like that, I can also fight it. I can counter it as well. However, I think it's important to bring some information and light right in this situation if you're going to come about making an allegation of Aaliyah, which her death continues to be so much surrounding so mysterious because there's so many theories and things that get thrown out there hence the purpose our of why we were reviewing things i just want to know what was the reason for the strike that's all i mean you could have reached out to me but i want to know i'm going to pull a cardi b on you I had a reason. What was the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? What was the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? 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 You see, you did a YouTube video, okay? You made these allegations. Somebody, a journalist reached out to you. You provided her context. She wrote a book about it. And a lot of that was published in this article. And guess what we did? Us little rabbits over here and a lot of other YouTube channels. They are putting information together to find the truth of this allegation. What we're allowed and supposed to do for educational purposes. And again, clips and art use is fair use for commentary. All things said are alleged and in fair use. Okay, so that's where I pull a Cardi B on you and I ask you, what was the reason? I'm going to ask you one more time because I know you're watching. I had a reason. What was the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? 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 To our country, she had a certain taxi driver, my stepmother. Louise McIntosh, all right? That was her taxi driver. And I used to do baggage, carrying the bags for people at the airport. Man, Aaliyah's an awesome person. But that incident that day, she didn't want none of it. She didn't even want to get on the plane. I remember it clearly. The thing is, she had a major, major headache. And she was on the phone with her boyfriend at one point. She told him that she didn't want to go. I heard the conversation, but it's like not all of it, but I knew she didn't want to go on the airplane. Because 
the whole weight situation, everyone in the airport was saying the same thing. But no, the people that was with her was consistent on getting on the fucking airplane. Aaliyah went and took a nap for 30 minutes. Whoever her people were that was with her, her entourage or her managers or whatever, they gave her some pills. She passed out in the back seat of the van. The next time Aaliyah woke up was when it was time to board the plane, bro. Everyone on that island went out there to go look for that airplane, bro. Because we knew it was, it was too much weight. Too much weight on that little ass plane. And whoever made her get on that plane, bro, And that was the clip that we had played. We did some alterations. We clearly took his image off, so he can't strike us for that. We altered the voice. Uh, we had used the one last night with commentary in fair use, of course. But see, mind you, the one that we used yesterday didn't have any ownership, okay? So when I got the strike this morning, to my surprise, it was somebody named Kingsley Russell. So now I know and I can confirm that that was Kingsley. Okay, so now we know, guys, that confirms it. Because otherwise, why would you strike an image? You would have to confirm that it's you. I mean, it's that simple. But let me tell you guys what we did yesterday in case you missed it. Because I definitely don't want to, you know, I want you guys to see how we connected this. Because it was, uh, it took a couple hours for us to figure this out. You see, in this clip, and I'm going to mute it. And I have it here. There is a, a name that's mentioned, okay? Louise McIntosh. All right, we talked about this name yesterday. Well, I'm gonna share with you an article because all I had to do was Google search the name with another name in reference about the taxi drivers. He is saying here that his stepmom was a taxi driver. If you guys remember him referencing that, right? Let me share with you what I have. And on a CBS article back in, what is it, 2013? Make sure I can see this. Here we go. CBS article back in 2013, blow it up. We will see November 19, 20, what is it? 20, oh, 2003, not 2013. I'm looking at this article, okay? And as I'm going down, you know, I already know the story. There's a pilot, he had cocaine, all of that. But then as you scroll down, there are two names in here. On the top, it says two taxi drivers who dropped the group off at Abacos Airport testified Tuesday that they were concerned about the amount of equipment they had with them. Annie Russell and Louise McIntosh. So Kingsley's stepmom was, or is, Louise McIntosh, had driven Aaliyah around while shooting the video Rock the Boat, which the 22-year-old singer had just finished at the time of her death. The two said they were concerned the amount of sound and video equipment would be too much. Oh, okay. That's how we figured out, well, this clip, this person who didn't have a name, we were able to match this person's name to the said person in there, right? He said his stepmom, Louise McIntosh. There's a name, Louise McIntosh, and this was back in 2003. They drove Aaliyah and her people around, right? So we said, okay, well, a lot of what he's saying is matching a little bit of what this Daily Beast article is saying. And now let's go to the Daily Beast because that's how we put the other piece together. Let's see. It was not a file. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Daily Beast, right? And again, this is not very, very old. Okay. This Daily Beast article, why I reference it is because there is so much pulled from the actual book from Kathy Ayandoli's book, okay, that is set to come out on the 17th. So as I'm looking here, they're referencing the date and everything. 
Kathy, ta- Kathy Iandoli talks about, you know, how she just had a hard time accepting Aaliyah's death, that people would have actually allowed her to get on this jet or even that she would have allowed herself to get on this jet. OK, hence why this is such a big deal. It's because it's a mystery. Did she get on this plane willfully or not? That's really what it comes down to. So then I'm going to zoom in here. And where I really pay attention to is Iandoli. Stumbled across what she believes is the final piece of the puzzle in the process of researching and writing her upcoming book. Baby Girl, better known as Aaliyah, out August 17th, which has given her a long-needed closure about the singer's death, she tells the Daily Beast. This is what the book looks like. It came from a man in the Abaco Islands named Kingsley Russell, hmm, whose family ran a taxi and hospital, hospi- what is it? Now I'm getting tongue tied. Hospitality business in the area shortly after the death of Kobe Bryant in February 2020. Russell made a since deleted YouTube video describing how the helicopter crash was triggering because it reminded him of the day he watched Aaliyah being taken on board the fatal flight while she was sleeping, while she was asleep, knocked out by a pill that a member of her team had given her. Minutes after he saw her entourage carrying a sleeping Aaliyah, okay, minutes after he saw her entourage carrying a sleeping Aaliyah onto the plane despite her previous protest about onboarding it, Russell said he remembers hearing the unforgettable sound of the aircraft crashing into the ground. I'm going to play that clip one more time, and this is for you, Russell Kingsley, Kingsley Russell. I'm going to play it for you. See what you said. She had a certain taxi driver, my stepmother, Louise McIntosh. All right. That was her taxi driver. And I used to do baggage, carrying the bags for people at the airport. Man, Aaliyah is an awesome person. But that incident that day, she didn't want none of it. She didn't even want to get on the plane. I remember it clearly. The thing is, she had a major, major headache. And she was on the phone with her boyfriend at one point. She told him that she didn't want to get on. I heard the conversation, but it's like not all of it, but I knew she didn't want to get on the airplane because the whole weight situation. Everyone in the airport was saying the same thing, but no, the people that was with her was consistent on getting on the fucking airplane. Aaliyah went and took a nap for 30 minutes. Whoever her people were that was with her, her entourage or her managers or whatever, they gave her some pills. She passed out in the back seat of the van. The next time Aaliyah woke up was when it was time to board the plane, bro. Everyone on that island went out there to go look for that airplane, bro. Because we knew it was it was too much weight. Too much weight on that little ass plane. And whoever made her get on that plane, bro, Somebody made her get on the plane. And in this article, it's saying something different. So what it comes down to is this. Okay. It says right here on this little paragraph, minutes after he saw her entourage carrying a sleeping Aaliyah onto the plane, despite her previous protests about it onboarding. So did she wake up and then get on the plane? Is that the next time she woke up or did they carry her sleeping to the plane? That's what the issue is. Because what it comes down to, I mean, these details are important. If if she was given a pill that put her to sleep in a deep sleep, okay, which is what this article says. So did, was she able to walk to the plane? Was she coherent enough to walk to the plane or was she carried to the plane? Which one is it? And so then if you think that a strike 
is going to shut channels or quiet or silence people. That is the wrong way to go about it. That's really what it comes down to. What you need to do is contact me and then we can chat. I give you the opportunity to fix this narrative. Because clearly the audio and video, it's not deleted. It's still out here. You want to make sure you clear this narrative. So Russell's account was a bomb to Ian Dolly, who for years struggled to accept the fact that Aaliyah willingly risked her safety and her teams just to make it back to Miami that Saturday night. And so then it goes in there to Ayandoli. Ayandoli talks about her struggles with just this idea that she would have done that. Um, and then she says, in learning that she did not want to get on the plane for someone like myself and so many other people, I think that's closure for us. And that's where I'm like, no, dude, this source, is it closure for us? I don't think so. It, it leaves more open. We need to clarify the statement because clearly, the video is still out there. It hasn't been deleted. So th that's the best approach. That's what I'm thinking would be the best approach, right? You actually contact the channel and say, hey, you have this information. I'd like to fix it. i like to release a statement. This is why I said what I said. This is what I meant. Hey, and then you allow the audience to figure it out. But here's the, 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 the deal of this whole, whole situation, guys. This book hasn't been released yet. It hasn't been released. It releases on the 17th. So then this is what I did. This is the other step that I took. Um, Google actually offers uh, opportunity for you to look at a preview of the book. I pulled the preview to some of these quotes and they match exactly what is said on the Daily Beast. So is the clip lying? Because you just identified yourself as Kingsley Russell when you submitted the copyright strike. So you have to be Kingsley Russell at this point. This woman right here is your stepmother. She drove you and Aaliyah and, and her business all over when she was there, when this happened. We just want clarity. Is, is that like too much to ask, guys? Clarity? Because we can go back to it. I have no problem. And if we need to go back specifically to what he said, was she conscious, unconscious? They gave her a pill. There are articles out there that are saying that she was drugged. Matter of fact, the one that I had initially read before the Daily Peace said she was drugged. So it's different. Then, you know, here you go, take this pill. Was it forceful? She didn't want to get on the plane. Why did they give her a pill? When you go to a doctor and you have some level of anxiety, okay, you have some anxiety and you're about to fly, you willfully go, you get a prescription, you don't just knock out and then they take you on the plane, guys. Right. Thank you. And that's the other mystery too, because I heard that he had passed away. Well, Kingsley, did you pass away or not? Because somebody put your name on this copyright strike. Now, mind you, this is a legal matter at this point, which means get your lawyers ready because I got mine. I would think that no, he has not passed away. Someone said that he had passed away in another article. I mean, is it a rep for Kingsley? This is a cluster mess, right? Is it another Kingsley? Did you really think we were going to stay silent on this? That's that's what I really, really want to know. Did you really, really think we were going to stay silent on this situation? Because let me tell you, let me tell you something. And Mel said it best. When the rabbit gets you, the rabbit gets you, period. When we get you, we get you. Right? When we get you, we get you. So it's better to clear the situation out than to move this way. Uh, at this point, I'm assuming it's either a cousin or maybe it's you. I don't know. Now I'm going to have to find out, well, did he pass away or not? Because that was another thing that was said out there. And I wanted to be very careful about that statement too. But, you know, it's one of our comments. I think it makes sense to find out. Who was it? Was it you or was it someone else? Right? And I'm curious to know, I'm going to look at the comments real quick. What I'll do is we'll go back to that clip again, okay? And I actually had slowed the sound down. You know, we altered it so we wouldn't necessarily receive any type of, 
you know, anything from Kingsley and or Kingsley relatives. But the person that submitted the copyright strike, his name is Kingsley Russell. So you just confirmed? You just confirmed what we totally knew. Right? And that is a great question, Jane. That was my question last time. He was 13 when this happened. How do you know the difference between, I mean, I guess I'm thinking about this. Think about Tylenol PM or all these like over the counter PM medications. They're all different colors. How do you know something is a sleeping med unless somebody tells you, right? At the age of 13, guys, I mean, I knew what a sweet tart was and I knew sweet tarts weren't medication. If you mix them together, I mean, the, that's how I was able to tell. He was 13. So how would he know that Aaliyah was giving a sleeping med? This is a huge statement. And is there anybody that could actually support those statements? Those were my questions that were asked at that time. Now, these people exist because the coroner's office did an inquest when this went down. OK, they pulled these people out. So we can't say that they're not real. But this Kingsley Russell personality and or character or person. That's a huge bombshell to drop. Right. I don't know. Maybe she went willfully. Maybe she did it. What we want to know is, OK, well, if she was carried to her demise. Right. Or maybe she went. And she was halfway walking. She was incoherent. How quickly. But here's the kicker to the situation. We're going to address it on our other live. You guys got to put your notifications on for later on tonight because we found some information about this phone call. Now, even Kingsley said it. He said she had talked to her boyfriend on the phone. One of the theories, and I want to thank a subby who made a huge long ass comment that really got me thinking because he was right on the money. One of the things that we have to do is start separating all these theories, okay? And start figuring out, does this theory withhold, withstand, and what would make it so, right? And could other people support the statements? So the way I see it is that it's like, what else? If that theory was just a theory, what else could it fall back on that would bring truth and or light to the situation? OK, that's how I look at it. So this phone call, he said it as well. You're going to hear other people say it. How many people did Aaliyah call before she boarded the plane? And. Would that make a difference to determine was she coherent enough on the phone? For us to know whether she took or didn't take a pill before she boarded the plane. That's a mouth load, guys. That's a mouth load. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I mean, again, I'm open to any thoughts or anything. We're going to play the Keen Sleep clip again. I'm just telling you guys this this, this just does not sit very well with me. Um, it definitely doesn't sit very well with me that this is the approach that's been taken. Now, respectfully, I understand how it works. Uh, sometimes you might say one thing and then you're like, let me delete it. But clearly it stayed up long enough for someone, for a journalist to come across it and try to figure out fact or fiction. Um, you hear it, actually, you read it on the Daily Beast. And not to say that the Daily Beast is 100% accurate, but they're pulling from the book. All these quotes and comments are from the book. And there are other sources that also cross check and you can reference it and they all match. So somebody didn't make up the story, guys. I don't know. I don't know. But let me go back to these comments. Uh, yes, please sure to hit the thumbs up. Or down. Love the engagement either way. Um, yeah, he can't keep his story straight. I that's how I see it. Gypsy cabs. Who hired? Oh, who hired to fight? Yeah, yeah. And that. Oh man, I don't know. That's a whole situation. That in itself is a whole rabbit hole. The credibility and credentials of this pilot, whether he was charged with fraud, had he been incarcerated, those are things that it's like. It was just. I don't know if it was just a perfect storm i hate to say it that way but it was so many factors that aided to the situation it doesn't help when other people add more to it and we just don't understand and or make sense of the situation i don't know look at this comment sounds like a lie to sell book shake my head i see i don't know saint titus i just and my hope it's not that it that's the attempt um 
but I think it's maybe to bring up another theory. I don't know. Okay, so having represented celebrities of her statue status, I know how this goes. Does not sound unusual to me. Um, yeah, and I mean, that that's very well the case. What I'm thinking is, if that is the case, then we need the clarity. Uh, you are open to clarify your story. Again, you might have stricken our channel. Uh, I'm one of those people that can look at things and maybe even evaluate the reason why, but then you need to be ready to discuss and or disclose some of that. Now, if that needs to be a pre-recorded conversation, we can do that. I'm open for it. I'm pretty flexible on that. Even if your story sounds ass backwards, I'd still give you the platform for it. And then we talk a little bit about, well, okay, does this make sense? You would just have to be open for probing. That's just how it is. I don't know. Maybe he's waiting for this book to come out. I don't know. Yes. Yes. Unwind with Teddy. We need clarity. We just want clarity. And this is what we need to find out. Well, I don't know. Did you come back and strike my channel? Right? It's not too much, but it might ha make some, yeah, some questions their credibility. At this point, they're looking to make some money with the book. Seems like BS. Right? Right? Xanax is one of the medications commonly prescribed to reduce anxiety. Yes. Oh, this is one little sticky rabbit hole. Oh my God. Yes, it is, Jane. It is. Now, okay, three things. I caught off and I got each one of them. So let me see what you got. Okay. We will, yes, shout out to Mel, who's on our clip. Uh, we do not know if it was a prescription medication is my question. Right. That's what I don't know. So this is what I ask on Wine with Teddy. This, this is my question to, to everyone on this. We had a toxicology report on the pilot. You see, even the article in 20, 2003 references there was cocaine, but we didn't see a toxicology report on all the other passengers. Okay, so and not the same. Maybe they didn't release it. Maybe it did happen. But if she took something, then that would confirm that somebody gave her something and it was in her system. Like that would help with that. So then that would at least let us know, well, she took something. Now, again, we want to protect her reputation. I get all that. But okay, here we are tw almost 20 years. Okay, 20, the 25th of August marks 20 years since her passing. And we're still trying to figure out, well, okay, what is the issue? Why, why is all this mystery surrounding her death? She was, you know, it said that she was, she didn't like planes. So I think it would be helpful to at least get some answers. How, how would such a young child even know what a sleeping pill? Yeah, we talked a little bit about that. Um, a child would associate her sleeping with sleeping pills. Right. Huh? Right. See, I wasn't giving sleeping pills as a child. I was probably giving coffee because I told you guys I have ADHD. So that puts me to sleep. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, it says it could very well be both because I have seen both. Most pilots will allow people to board unless they walk on, but I have seen even children carried to the pilot or to the plane because they are asleep. Right. So we have, I mean, I could see that right. Carried by a parent, but here you have an adult. Now here, here's the thing, guys, she was with her security guard, right? Her security, all these people, if you think about it, they work for her, right? They're dancers They're She's the one really just, she has these people with her security. So in my mind, I'm like, well, if, if she was hesitant to go in from the cab, like, did security, that's the piece that I understand. Like, did security not do anything to kind of step in and make sure that didn't happen? Or like, what was really the dynamics? That's the part that I don't understand. I don't understand it. Yeah, uh, let's see what it said. Yeah, can you see, if you don't want to talk to Robbie, you can contact me. I have work, my own work. Uh, I'm very reputable in celebrities. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll definitely make sure that they will get that message. Uh, be sure to hit the thumbs up. Um, would be able to confirm if he spoke with her before the flight. Yeah. I would like to know. I would like to know if we can confirm that. Thank you so much for your support with the rabbit. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, did confirm that. Yeah, so, so here's the deal. The article confirms it. Okay. And his statement in the audio confirms that too. I'm going to play it one more time. If you're just coming in, just so you guys can hear it. 
the pilot who put him in the position to operate the aircraft is uh yes and so then this is like a one single engine i believe aircraft um that is in a small little island i don't know how those regulations look what a mess so many loopholes yes very sad situation chances are she's she willfully went and got a prescription for every single time she flew that'll be most likely in the tsa report yes see but how do we get a hold of that? So let me tell you how much digging I did. Yes, I did some digging. A lot of digging. I not only looked at Aaliyah, I looked at all the passengers, okay? Um, I looked at figuring out civil lawsuits between what happened afterwards because it was very telling. Um, I don't, I, I'm not going to disclose all the information that I have quite yet. I do see some things that maybe the major media networks don't know quite yet. Uh, so I'm going to keep that to myself. I will say this. There's a lot of information, a lot of potholes. And if you are a researcher like myself or you like to find information, you know that you'll go in and out different rabbit holes to find what you need to do it ethically. You can do it ethically. Right. Have you talked to Kathy? You know what? I'm, I might. That might be my next step um, because I think it's important um, to at least keep her apprised because I know this book is coming out. Maybe she might want to write an addendum to that situation. I think one thing that I understood from the daily beast though, and if you guys see it is when she found out about this guy, um, she said that it was a super fan group that found out about him. Okay. And so they wanted to contact him, whether he was lying or telling the truth, but at least allowing, you know, us to determine. So if that was her approach, Maybe that was her approach, right? Um, but I do plan to contact at least her team or someone, whoever will be willing to answer and let them know. I don't know. Question. They were supposed to board a G5. I need to know why did they take a smaller plane? So what happened was they had planned to stay, okay, finish up the work. They finished early. That's why the only thing available at the time was a smaller plane. But the production company, my understanding was that they only offered, like they only had that plan at that time. Um, and that's how they were going to go. Now, my understanding of how it goes, and this is where I need to confirm more information. So this is where I'm going to say allegedly. The plane that they came in the island, th it was the same plane that they left. Okay. So at some point, the plane was in working condition. I don't know if they had any issues while they were, you know, in the sky when they arrived to the island did or, or was it a different flight? Cause there was two different stories that I saw that are conflicting. I'm trying to figure out the best way to confirm that information. We're still working on that. Uh, she was not to board the same plane. She left, left the States on. So yeah, that would give me anxiety. I've, I've done small planes. I don't like them guys. Quick background shows that he's, that he's still alive, but that's pending. There's several people in the Bahamas, the same name. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I noticed that too in my research. I'm curious as to why there was a toxicology done with her or if there's anyone in the public. Yeah, that was my question because um, they did do the, uh, they did the, did the work. Okay. They told us what she died of. So if they did a, a report on the, on the pilot, was it also standard to do reports on everyone else? It's not something that was my question as well. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's not something that we have. Devil's advocate, you know, we love the devil's advocate. We have to see things both sides. Most likely considering the stepmom was the driver, there's some confidentiality broken here. Mm, in terms of what, the stepmom being the driver? I don't know. I mean, because some of this is just, you know, that's already out there. Their names were already out there since 20, what, 2003? So I don't know. Yes, we need to find a tox report, but I don't know how readily that will be available. There's a YouTube video where talking about the phone call. Yeah, um, and I got some info on that as well. We will definitely look into it. There has to be NDAs signed. Yeah, um, and I was thinking about that too. Maybe, uh, maybe he signed an NDA. Okay, here's the deal. Let's just play the devil's advocate. Maybe he signed an NDA before he uh, talk to Kathy after he talked to Kathy Iandoli or before either or right. Maybe he signed it. And, um, that was part of his deleted, you know, thing. He had to delete the video. Well, clearly he didn't delete it from everywhere. 
right? So he didn't break any NDAs. Somebody, I mean, this is out, guys. This is public, right? Oh, claims that she was nervous. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, I am going to, let's see, let's see. All taxi drivers talk. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Those planes are ridiculous. It's actually over six pages. It is on Google. You're going to find it. There are a hundred small networks. Okay. I will definitely look into anything you guys want me to look into. Um, so I'm going to play the clip one more time. Um, I would ask you to really think about, look into the Daily Beast, look at other articles and reference it. Okay. You will see, you're going to see how, um, in referencing these articles, they're pulling from the book and Iandoli's statements as well, okay? So we have to make sure that at the very least, if he deleted this video when this book, when she was working on this book, maybe that was the attempt, right? Maybe that's how he was going to be quiet. But I'm just thinking in my mind, well, if that's the case, then does Iandoli know that they're still available out there? Was that part of the, the deal? Or was it just to tell the story? I don't know. I'm just curious to know your thoughts, but let me go ahead. I'm going to play it one more time so you guys can hear it again and you guys know what exactly was said and everything that it contains. Let me see if I can remove this guy. Leah came to our country. She had a certain taxi driver, my stepmother, Louise McIntosh. All right. That was her taxi driver. And I used to do baggage, carrying the bags for people at the airport. Man, Aaliyah is an awesome person. But that incident that day, she didn't want none of it. She didn't even want to get on the plane. I remember it clearly. The thing is, she had a major, major headache. And she was on the phone with her boyfriend at one point. She told him that she didn't want to get on. I heard the conversation, but it's like not all of it, but I knew she didn't want to get on the airplane because the whole weight situation. Everyone in the airport was saying the same thing, but no, the people that was with her was consistent on getting on the fucking airplane. Aaliyah went and took a nap for 30 minutes. Whoever her people were that was with her, her entourage or her managers or whatever, they gave her some pills. She passed out in the back seat of the van. The next time Aaliyah woke up was when it was time to board the plane, bro. Everyone on that island went out there to go look for that airplane, bro because we knew it was it was too much weight. Too much weight on that little ass plane. And whoever made her get on that plane, bro, you're f Okay. So there you go. Now I'm going to I'm going to ask you go and look at the different articles that are out there. This was his statements that he made. Okay, this is the same person that Kathy Iandoli said uh, she had seen the video, since deleted video, and because of that, that's what made her reach out to him to to figure out this was the last missing puzzle piece for her. Because, and I would agree, I would I feel some type of way about this because if that's the case, if she was drugged in there. All right, drugged uh, or carried. That sounds different than you know what she went in there and she died and, and 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 willfully went on this plane, right? I don't know. Those are the two conflicting things, and this situation doesn't help. And even then, his statement doesn't even give us clarity as to how he knew that she was given a sleeping pill out of all the pills at age thirteen. I don't know. I'm just thinking. I'm thinking out loud. Yeah, Ira, I don't know if I, I could reach out to Damien Dash. Um, 
I don't know if anybody would answer me from that team. Um, I mean, the guy has done a couple more interviews and he's been a little bit more open about what has happened. I'm kind of wondering what his opinions are about this book as well. Uh, again, we haven't read it. We haven't read it. Um, I did get a little preview on it. If you go to Google, you search it, you can actually see the print of certain pages and get to see some of this um, stuff that is quoted also on these articles. So it's matching a lot of what it's saying. The problem is this, is that this, this, this sense deleted clip, okay? This sense deleted clip doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. He said, he said that she woke up before she onboarded. And we can go back to it again. I think I did that a couple times yesterday, guys. So was she drugged or was she, did she wake up? Which one is it? She passed out in the back seat of the van. The next time Aaliyah woke up was when it was time to board the plane, bro. Everyone on that island went out there to go look for that airplane, bro. Because we knew it was, it was too much weight. Too much weight on that little ass plane. And whoever made her get on that plane, bro, you're f Yes. I hate to say this, and you're going to hate me for it. There are people out there that could have staged this as well. The whole entire incident. She was getting bigger. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. Yeah, I don't like at all the whole state. I, I don't because... Man, that would suck. I really hope that that wasn't the case. I'm just saying. Popcorn Planet. Oh, I'm a, I'm a subby of your channel, by the way. Love your channel. Uh, yes, a little, little late. Um, so here's the deal. Yes, I got a copyright strike from a fellow by the name of Kingsley Russell because uh, his video that he since deleted what the Daily Beast is saying, where he made these allegations that Aaliyah was drugged. She was given a drug, okay, before she was taken to this plane. And let me see if I can share that screen with you guys. Not the video file screen. Here we go. All righty. Let's see. One second. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So in here, he talked about a video that Iandoli stumbled upon. She was actually provided by, by a super fan group of Aaliyah, okay? And so then from there, um, he made a statement about minutes after he saw her, her entourage carrying a sleeping Aaliyah onto the plane despite her previous protests about onboarding it, okay? So there's like these things that are very inconsistent to the actual video that he made back in... What is it? February 2020. So the reason why he made this video clip, the reason why he made this video clip, and, and this is on the Daily Beast, there are other articles that are citing the same thing. Shortly after the death of Kobe Bryant in February 2020, Russell made a sense-deleted YouTube video describing how the helicopter crash was triggering because it reminded him of the day he watched Aaliyah being taken, onboarded the fatal flight while she was asleep. While she was asleep, knocked out by a pill that a member of her team had given her. So, this book is not even out, guys. Since deleted video. No, it's not. No, it's not. So, which one is it? I did get your email. Um, we have not responded. And uh, no one has asked me to take any videos down from family. Uh, again, the information that we're using is for public use. Um, it is all available and respectfully, right? Uh, we definitely want to keep your family and everyone else um, in our minds as we're talking about this issue. We are talking about Ayandoli's book and some of the allegations. So how this kind of started was yesterday's live kind of ricocheting and we went all over the place about this book what is public information such as the aviation investigation as well as reports um and just a lot of questions that we had about what these new allegations are doing 
you know? I uh, probably just wasn't the right frame of mind to know what was completely going on. Yes. Um, let me see what else. Yes. And I'm sorry for your loss as well. So I, again, for us, we're just fan. We're, we're just fans. And we're just trying to find out whether this uh, Russell Kingsley is telling the truth or not, or if there's more embellishment to it. I'm not really sure. Uh, again, thinking out loud. Yes, thank you. Please hit the thumbs up. Please share this live. Here's the deal. When you copyright strike a channel, it's clearly because you're trying to quiet the messenger. And I'm just not down for that, guys, because what we're doing here is we're really just sharing the information that's already been out there in a public forum, respectfully, okay? And uh, we want to make sure it gets out there. It needs to get out there. So someone by the name of Kingsley Russell struck our channel. Now, someone made a comment up there that said, well, isn't he dead? I read somewhere that he had died. I'm not really sure if there's any validity to that at this point. I mean, unless he came back and struck the channel, I don't know. I don't know. Curious to know what your guys' thoughts are, okay, on this situation. Now, of course, we have another live scheduled. I had to push back the one that we were scheduled for today. Um, I'm just wanting to make sure that, number one, you cannot silence, okay? It's okay for our opinion. Hence why we have a YouTube channel and, and we get in here and we talk about different things, okay? We have a lot of content creators on this chat. So shout out to you guys for that. Um, yeah, it, it took a couple hours to do some research, guys. And why we figured out, again, why we figured out that was Kingsley on the audio was because he referenced a name by the name of Louise McIntosh. Louise McIntosh, if you do a Google search with for her name, as well as her uh the other driver which is ann russell annie russell that comes up in a 2003 article from cbs that's talking about those two women being taxi drivers for the entourage okay so again public information sharing it i ask you to, to please do so if you strike the channel and again i'm still open to chatting with you to talking about this, if there's some clarification, if you meant to say something different, totally open for you to come and join us on our platform, because I'm telling you, our audience wants to know, and they're very invested in wanting to know some level of truth. That's right. Sis, we're looking for you. Tell us what's up. Tell us what's up, because I've heard the name of Annie Russell all over. When he said that name, Louise, I knew that we were onto something. And I say it again, and shout out to Mel the Lipstick Diva. When Check the out our channel. Get you the rabbit, get you. Period. That's it. That's all we want. We want the truth. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Please share this live. Please don't silence the rabbits. Please don't silence the other channels, guys. Don't do that. Let's let's just you know. Let, let's get the message across. Share this live because clearly they're trying to silence us. I don't know. Rabbits out.